in it. Amen. We thank God for another Sunday of worshiping him. Amen. How many know it's a call on all of our lives to worship God, young and old? We are called here to worship him and give him praise. So we just thank him for the call to worship. Amen. Amen. So we're going to lift up a song of worship. Amen. God is an awesome God. How many know that God is an awesome God? Amen. There's none like him. Amen. So let's uh, fulfill this call of worship on our lives. We were created to praise him. So let's lift up this song of worship and give him the glory he deserves. Amen. 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 this out a little bit just a little bit the blue 
fantastic. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. An awesome God. Awesome God. Awesome God. If you wouldn't mind, those that are on Facebook and even those in the sanctuary, can we stand to our feet? Amen. And let's give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's fill the sanctuary of worship and praise. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you think on the goodness of Jesus Christ and all that he's done for you, all that he's worked out for you, all the things he's protected you from, you should stand to your feet and say, hallelujah, thank you, God, for all that you've done for me. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, thank you, God, for blessing me. Hallelujah. God is in the blessing business, and he's not out of business. In fact, he's flourishing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you think about the goodness of Jesus Christ, it should feel like a football stadium when somebody just scored a touchdown. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We scored another point. Hallelujah. God is still with me. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just that, that sometimes, you know, you just got to let your hair down and give God the praise. Amen. Some of us are going in storms, some are coming out of storms, and some of us are interceding while someone is going through what they're going through. So praise breaks through those things. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And at this time, uh, we'll have our announcements by Sister Darty Scott. We're gonna have a hymn, No Not One. We're gonna have scripture by our deacon, Deacon Davis McNeil. And then we're gonna have a prayer by, by uh, Pastor Scott, amen? amen? Praise God. Good morning, good morning. To our in-house worshipers, to our in-house visitors, to our live stream family, and to our live stream visitors, these are our announcements for October the 24th. This afternoon from 12 to 2 p.m., Michelle Vaughn and the Pretty and Pink Ministry will recognize Baptist Temple Church breast cancer survivors downstairs in the fellowship hall. Continue to keep our survivors and this ministry in your prayers. Amen? Amen. 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 On next Sunday, October 31st, the youth ministry will have their annual harvest celebration for the youth of our church and the community. Thank you all for donating candy in support of this fellowship. Next Sunday, October 31st, is also our Dress Down Sunday. Please come and worship in the sanctuary as you are next Sunday and every Sunday. On Saturday, November the 6th at 10 a.m., we will come together for our monthly Hour of Power. Hour of Power is now in person here at the church. Where we corporately come and pray, amen. Where we corporately come and pray together um, for our church, for our community, for our pastor, for just our ministries, amen. 
As we announced during the last month, the purpose of the Souls to Polls campaign is to make sure that all Bethany Church members vote during the upcoming election. New Jersey voters can vote early today until October 31st, Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The Camden location is Rowan University, 129 South Broadway. Please make sure your vote is heard. Amen? Amen. 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 We also ask that we continue to pray for the Baptist Temple Church family and all of our sick and shut-in members, those bereaved and all those who are going through difficult times in their lives. And we have um, one additional uh, announcement today, a special young lady. Um, it's a milestone, milestone birthday. Every birthday is a milestone. But this particular one, she turned 70 years young today. And that is Deaconess Charmaine Barber. And she's excited about her birthday. Did you know who she is? Deaconess Charmaine Barber. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for letting me see your 70 years. I'm just ask you to continue to be blessed. <laughs> As Pastor always says, who, what does the world need? Who, what does everyone need? Oh, we could do a little better than that. <laughs> Who does everyone need? Jesus. Amen. I have our hymn, No Not One. Amen. Jesus, no, not one. Amen. 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 
Amen. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Amen, amen. I'm going to attempt to read Ephesians, the third chapter, from the seventh verse to the 21st verse. Amen. Again, that's Ephesians, third chapter, verses 7 through 21. And I'll be reading out of NIV. If you found it, say, speak, Lord. Amen. amen. I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given to me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all of God's people, his grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of his mystery, which for ages past have kept hidden in God who created all things. His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to his eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. In him through faith and through faith in him we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you therefore not to be discouraged because of my sufferings for you which are for your glory. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power, that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 I read you Ephesians 3, verses 17 through 21. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearers, and most of all the doers of his word. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is full with sadness, but it's my offering. Lay me at the throne and leave me there alone to gaze upon his glory as I sing my song. Take me to the king. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you first, Lord, asking that you forgive us for our sins we have committed. Then, Lord, we stand as humble as we know how. For you, Lord, it was just a touch from you, Lord, to wake us up this morning. And we do not take that for granted, Lord, because some have not got up. But I thank you, Lord, for watching over us. Come, Lord, that we may together praise your holy word. Come, Lord, that we may be ever together to give you praise in your name. We ask, Lord, today that you will bless the man of God as he comes forward. We ask, Lord, today that you will bless Baptist Temple as we grow in your word, Lord. Touch our pastor and his wife, Lord. Touch every member and their coming and going. We ask you, Lord, right now to bless us, for we know that you have blessed us. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord, and all the honor. For you are worthy, worthy, Lord, to be praised. We give you the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Give him the praise this morning, amen. Give him the praise this morning. He is worthy to be praised, amen. Just glad to be here once again, Baptist Temple. I missed y'all for a couple weeks, amen. I was a little under the weather. Uh, thank, thank you to little Mark, um, gave me his cold. And you know, when you get a cold nowadays, you gotta go get a COVID shot, I mean COVID test to make sure that you don't have COVID. So I was uh, a little under the weather, but thank God that the test came back negative. And I'm able to be here with you this morning, amen. But I want to get an honor to my church, Baptist Temple, to the deacons, to the trustees, to the praise and worship team, amen, to my colleagues in the pulpit, my first lady, who I love dearly, and my pastor. Amen. I love this man. I loved him before I even joined this church. Amen. We was in seminary school, and I was going through the worst test of my life. And he was right there by my side, still pastoring y'all and still being there for me. So it was an honor to share this sacred desk with a man of God like the one we have here at Baptist Amen. Temple. Amen. But God gave me a word this morning to give right. to you. Amen. Right. Amen. So many, I've been talking to so many people and so many people are going through so many difficulties. Um, on social media, you see people posting things on social media. You talk to people, you see people at work. Um, See Sister Jackson sending out prayer requests for our members. Some of us are just going through some difficult times right now. But God is still able, amen? So I ask that you turn me to the book of Deut Deuteronomy. In that eighth chapter. And I'll be reading verses 1 through 4. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 4. And I'll be reading out the New King James Version. Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers. 
And you should remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the, from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. I just want to talk to you shortly on the subject of broken but not shattered. Let us pray. Our Father, our God, Lord, we come before you this morning, Lord, first and foremost to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, because you are a perfect God, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you saved us who were lost, Father God, that you allow us to see, Father God. Lord, we are just so grateful to be able to come into your house once again, Father God, to lift up your holy and precious name. But, Lord, I have studied, Father, I have prepared, but there's no preaching that could take place without your power. So, Lord, I ask, Lord, that you fill me up like never before, Lord. Hide me behind the cross that, Lord, that they don't see Mark Logan, Lord, but they see only you, Father. Lord, let us leave here better than the way we came in, Lord. Lord, we love you and we adore you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray with love and thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Like I said, so many people are going through so many difficulties during this time. Um, sometimes we feel like we've been, we are broken. Sometimes we feel like we are lost. Sometimes we don't know where our help is coming from. But the title is Broken and Not Shattered. Because there's a difference between being broken and being shattered. When you are broken, you are damaged or some things around you may be a little altered, that is a little out of your norm and you're just not feeling a certain way. But when you are broken, you are able to be restored, depending on who's doing the restoration. But when you are shattered, you are destroyed. But I see that I'm looking at you and you are looking at me. So that means that God has not given up on any of us this morning. Amen. But there's two type of ways that we as Christians act when we are, feel like we are broken. And I feel like neither one of them are right. The one is sometimes we walk around with our head down as if we serve a God of no hope. Telling somebody, I don't know, the devil's on my back. I don't know, I don't have this and I can't get through. Every time I take a step, I take two steps back. And sometimes during that state, there are nine believers who hear us talk like that. And if they say that, if you say you serve an awesome God and you act like you have no hope, then there's no reason for me to serve the God that you serve. And then there's the other Christian. I I put myself in this category. When you feel like you're so broken inside, but yet still you're running around like there's nothing wrong, that you're keeping everything to yourself. And you're not telling nobody to pray for you or having someone that is your prayer partner or your accountability partner. But neither one of them are right. Because I think pastor preached that everyone needs someone. So no, we shouldn't walk around as if we don't have hope. But also when we are going through some things, we need that accountability partner to lift us up. And to keep us in prayer. Here in Deuteronomy in the first two verses, say, every commandment which I command you today that you must carefully, careful to observe, and you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way. Let me read, read that again. That the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness 
to humble you and test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments. God is reminding you and I that he sent them in the wilderness for a reason. And it's always to make you better. So we should stop blaming the enemy every time that we feel like we are going through a situation. Instead, we should gather ourselves and seek God's face and study to prepare for the test. When we are in a situation, we have to know that God has never left us nor forsaked us. That, that, he, that he is going to use that for his glory. And even if it was the devil that's on your back, we serve a God that is stronger and bigger than the enemy. So no matter what situation we find ourselves in, that God is God. He is stronger. He is better than any other thing. And also, we have to study to prepare for the tests. We know that tests are coming. We do know that. We know tests are coming. Just like when we're in school, we have to prepare for the tests. That's just like in the word of God. We have to study to prepare ourselves for the test because we know the test is coming. God sent Israel to a place where they only could do is depend on God. God tests us sometimes not for him to know our hearts, but so that we can know his. And sometimes God has to break us to humble us and to save us. And there's a story of a, a little girl who dad let her outside and dad told her and, and the other little girl to stay right here. But as sometimes we don't listen to what daddy says. So the little girl went wandering off away from where her dad said to go. So when she wandered off, she ended up falling into a hole. So the other little girl ran back and got, her, got dad and said, dad, she fell into the hole. So the dad came and seen her in the hole and dad couldn't get her out of the hole. So then they called the fire department. The fire department came and they lowered a fireman down to get her. The fireman tugged on the cord, and they pulled the fireman out, and he said, I cannot get her out. She's stuck. So they were sitting there trying to figure out how I'm going to get her out of this hole. So the lieutenant said, lower me down. I'm going to try to get her out. They lowered him down, and he tugged on the cord. They pulled him out, and when they pulled him out, he had the little girl with him. So everyone else said, how did you get her out? He said, I had to break her leg in order to get her out of the hole. And that's sometimes what God has to do with us. Sometimes we don't do what God tells us to do. Sometimes we find ourselves drifting off and doing what we want to do. And even then when we drift off and do what we want to do, we find ourselves in a valley or we find ourselves in a hole that we should not be in. And even though that we are in this valley and in this hole that we should not be in, that's the only time that God has to do. He has to come and break us so that he can bring us out of the hole so that we may be able to live for him. Break us. Brokenness come in different ranges. It could be emotional brokenness to a spiritual brokenness. It can be a past relationship that may have left scarring. It could be deep wounds from the past, maybe childhood issues, or it can be something that you are feeling right now, and it may feel like God isn't anywhere to be found. But the God I serve will take the broken and he will put it back together and make it better than it was before. He will take the pieces of our lives, glue them together, make them strong in places that they once were weak. How do I know? Because Psalms 147 says, he said that I, he will heal the brokenhearted and will bind up their wounds. I stand on his word because it's true. And I don't want to walk around with my head down as if I serve a God with no hope. So I'm, I'm okay when I'm broken inside. 
I'm not okay because of what I see or how I feel, but it's because I know it's just for a season. Yes, I may have more bills than I have money. I may not know what tomorrow has, but I'm okay because I know who holds tomorrow. And if I embody in him and he embodies in me, then I know that I'm going to be okay. We have to understand that everything has a season. The weather has, a season, has seasons. We have the summer, we have the winter, we have the fall, and we have the spring. Farmers, they even have seasons. Time to plant, time to toil, time to water. There's a time of waiting, and then there's the harvest. Sports have a season. There's a preseason, then there's a season, and there's a postseason in training. There's even season in parenthood. We have a season of infant. We have a season with toddler. We have a teenage season, and we have adult season. Everything has a season. And we all have a spiritual season. Our spiritual seasons start when we first confess that we believe in Jesus Christ. And then we have a season all the way up until we get to the promised land. But just like seasons, we have to prepare for the spiritual season. Because when it's cold outside, we, we, we prepare for the weather to change. We go get our coats. We go get our long underwear. We go get our wool hats to prepare for the cold. When we know it's raining outside, we make sure we grab our umbrella to protect us from the rain. When it's hot outside, we make sure we go get our swimming trucks, our shorts, and everything to prepare for the heat. Well, just like we prepare for those seasons, we have to prepare for the seasons of our spiritual season. Because it's not going to rain all the time. Their sun will come out. But how do we prepare? By studying, praying, and praising our holy Savior. In the spiritual season, there are going to be times of lost loved ones. There are going to be times when we are dealing with addictions. There are going to be times when we are dealing with relationship issues, sickness, illness. And between those times, we have rest. Your wilderness may not be my wilderness, and my wilderness may not be yours, but we are have seasons to be in the wilderness. Even if you think about even as a diamond or even as a ruby or even just going a little lower, even as furniture, when something needs to be restored or to be made better, it has to go through a season or a process. Things have to be stripped away. Scratches and spots have to be sanded and smooth to get out the imperfections. And most of the time before the restoration process, it usually has to get to its worst state. But when it is restored, it's better than it ever was. Well, I'm here to tell you this morning that God has to do the same thing with us. He first has to put us in the fire to strip away our old nature. And then he has to send away our strongholds and some our iniquities. And then he has to polish us up to look good for him so we can be good again. God is working on us so that we can be bigger, so that we can be better for his purpose and his glory. So when you feel like that you are in the wilderness, I came to tell you this morning to just stand and just hold on because it's going to get a little better and it's just for a season. James 1 and 2 says, count it all joy. Count it all joy knowing that the God that we serve, 
that is only going to be for a period of time. Deuteronomy 8, 3 and 4 says, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know. That he might make you know that man should not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your foot swell these 40 years. So he humbled you. All God's education starts here. Because we are not humbled, we are not able to be teachable. And then we are not able to grow. So he has to humble you to prepare you for your season. Then he allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna. Total dependence on the Lord. Israel had to rely on God beyond their own knowledge and beyond their own ability. And sometimes that's where God needs us to be. The man should not live by bread alone. It was when you first believed God's word. That's when you really started to live. You will never get an increase of spiritual life and grow in grace by your own feelings and by your own doings. It must still be by believing the promises of God and regurgitating on his word, knowing that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Your garments did not wither, did not wear out. Nor did your foot swell these 40 years. I don't know about you, but God makes sure that I have everything I need. Whether I'm at rest, whether I'm in a storm, no matter where I am, he always makes sure I have what I need. And then he maintains things so that they will last longer. He will take care of you and I in the midst of feeling broken. In Matthew 6, 25 and 27, it says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. What will you eat or what will you drink? Nor about your body. What will you put on? Is it not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Then he says, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which Which of you by worrying, which of you by worrying can add one cubic? to his statue. God is telling you and I that through ever or whatever we are going through, I got you. I'm the same God that got you through your childhood. I'm the same God that got you through your other situations. I am the same God that held you when you was in your mother's womb. I got you. Whatever you are feeling this morning, God came to tell you and he came to tell I that I got you. I'm the same God before, I'm the same God now, and I'm the same God forevermore. So why don't you just on, while you on this rod, just hold on because I got you that I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to cover you, and I'm going to make sure that you come out better than the way you came in. Even though some of us may feel like, feel we don't know where to go. And some of us don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. Some even feel like giving up. But I came to tell you this morning, this is where you may need to be. Because when we are in this state, we are using in two positions. We use it in prayer or we use it in praise. So sometimes God has to get us and break us so that we can be in these two positions so that he can get our attention. 
and total dependence. So you may feel broken, but I came to tell you this morning that you are definitely not shattered. You are repairable. You can be rejuvenated. You can be put back together better than the way you were if you just tune in to Jesus. He went down so you and I didn't have to. He got up and lived so me and you can live with life more abundantly. And if you know him like I do, he has never left me nor forsake me. And even when I can't feel his presence, I came to tell you today to trust his heart. Because Romans 8 and 28 said they're all things. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. To those who are called according to his purpose. So knowing this, I'm going to keep praising him. For knowing this, I'm going to keep my faith. For knowing this, I know that I will be out of the wilderness shortly. And it's only for a season. Let the church sing amen. Let the church say amen. Broken but not shattered. Broken but not shattered. What an awesome word. It's only for a season. Only for a season. But the one thing we have to remember, that you can't get these truths unless you have gave your life to God. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and risen again, you shall be saved. If he or she should call on the Lord, he shall save you. So we give you that opportunity now. Don't take for granted that you have time to do this. God wants to heal you today. So now we open the doors of the church. Those are on live stream. We have a number for you to call. If you need someone to talk to, you can do so. We don't want to leave nobody out. This is what it's all about. Sharing his love. The doors of the church is open. Maybe you have wavered for a while and you felt that you were broken. But you're not shattered. You're not shattered. God loves those who can come back to him. He's a God of another chance. This is your opportunity to give your life back to him. Maybe you just want to rededicate yourself. You can do so right now. Church, the doors of the church is open. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I am fixable. Thank you, Lord, that I know that you never leave me nor forsake me. Thank you, Lord, that we can just come to you, Lord, when we need someone to talk to. Thank you, Lord, for the seasons that we may be able to grow through them, Lord. Father, we ask that you will bless us right now. Those are having marital problems. Those that are having financial problems. Those are ailing right now, Lord. Touch them, Lord. We ask, Lord, you bless the ones that are, are lonely. Those who are single. We ask, Lord, that you touch those that are in depression, anxiety. For we know the only great healer is Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we stand, Lord, before you right now, as humble as we know how.
given ourselves to you, Lord, for you are worthy to be praised. And when we leave here, Lord, when we walk out the door, Lord, we know that we got the victory in you, Lord, for victory is in Jesus. We ask you, Lord, that God is in keep us. In Jesus' name, which we pray. Let the church sing. Amen. Amen.